Chapter 5 What big ears you have. Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Why are you so scared of that old lady in the hazmat suit? That was my grand. That was your grand? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for all this. Let's just get to the treehouse and figure things out there. Lead the way. The Valentine Mansion loomed, both figures. Hmm. Not any different. After the foul harvest destroyed, the Valentines shuddered. Not any different. Any bees? No bees. Definitely don't go that way. Oh, don't go this way. Yeah, don't they won't even let me go this way. Oh, okay. Can you grab a mushroom? Like, like your way. Uh oh. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Of course, we're not worried. The clipboard finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. If there's anything else you need, you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here acknowledging everything is accurate, we'll be out of your hair in a flash. Oh, for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. There. And would you like my eternal soul as well? The clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, then broke into laughter as they walked away. <laughs> Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, give him a good hard ball prank and a kisser. <laughs> Oh, Grin tells me to just keep away from the clipboards. That's good, that's good. Your Gran is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you'd better run along home now. Too dark out to be wandering on your own. Don't you know I'm with my friend? Mm-hmm. Didn't see it out uh, see Beck at all? Yeah, hi, Mr. Nun Creed. Nun Creed? Uh oh, what's gonna be happening here? The answers you seek will be revealed to you in due time. The question is, the figure intoned, are you prepared to live with the truth? Spooky. <laughs> Good. Got an extra over here. A couple knocks for safety. <laughs> And to show Bex what's up. Put that in here. Oh, no dilly dallying. <laughs> another day, another dollar. See you tomorrow, Z. How all the perennial harvest folks order the same drink? Decaf cappuccino with extra foam. Why? I don't know. Just thought it's a little odd. Pretty weird for sure. Well, customer's always right. See you bright and early tomorrow. I can't wait. Anything going on at the Dina? There. 
when you can't talk to them? Exactly. Don't put a little magnifying glass. Like I can talk to them. Hey! You moved. <laughs> You're not just sleeping outside. Oh, of course. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. <laughs> All coming together quite nicely. Couldn't have said it. Couldn't have done it without you. The mayor gave a half-hearted shrug. I'm not sure about that. Nonsense. That reminds me, I wasn't able to thank your sister for her contributions. Yes, she has been indisposed of late. She doesn't li much like me, does she? Oh, no. That's uh, not it at all. She's just been busy. Of course. Regardless, I'd be forever grateful if you could pass my thanks on to her. The History Museum adds a real air of import to the whole affair. We couldn't very well celebrate the story of Beacon Pines without including Valentine's. My father was a great man. The darn tootin' he was. Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. But I mean, the entire Valentine family. Present company included. Can I ask you something, Mr. Kerr? Call me William. Ask away. William, why are you doing all this? Never felt one needed a compelling reason to throw a party. Not just the festival. All of this. There's gotta be a hundred down on their luck towns out there. Why is Perennial Harvest so invested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I love most about the agricultural business? Seeds. Seeds? Yep. Little bundles of potential. With a glimmer in his eye, Kurt gestured grandly toward the horizon. You treat a seed right, nurture it, feed it, and it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here. Undoubtedly. Seeds of greatness is always... <laughs> seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge. And the right leadership, of course. Oh. Good night, Mayor Valentine. Man, nobody even notices through. we're here. Yeah, just walk through us. Yeah, rude. No dilly dallying. Okay. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, the tree house is just a little further on from here. So what's your buddy Rolo like? Rolo? He's... Rolo. Not particularly helpful. Sorry, I never thought about it. Lots of energy. He's funny, even when he's not trying to be. Uh, things have been tough for his family since the foul harvest. It's about to have time you tell me what this ha foul harvest thingy is. It's kind of long story. Hit me with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company called Valentine's. They kind of were a big deal. Oh, big deal fertilizer. It was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked. Farmers loved it. So Valentine's grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Most everyone in town either worked for a sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. I'm sensing a big but. Around six years ago, sharper Valentine suddenly died. And something changed. Changed how? Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water or the air or the soil. Nobody knows. But all the crop all the crops died. And everyone blamed the Valentines. The 
foul harvest. Yeah. Valentine's fertilizer went out of business. Half of half the town lost their jobs. Sheesh. The next year, the crops came back, but something was different. You plant a crop, do everything right, and it's sort of just... It's sort of a... Poop shoot. <laughs> a poop shoot. It's sort of a poop shoot. What happens? And no one knows why? Nope. I take it Rolo's farm got the short end of the stick? Yep, for some reason their farm was hit harder than others. That sucks. Things have gotten better since perennial harvest came to town. The Beacon Pines Reborn Initiative? Yep, first thing they did was give the town a deep scrub. They even put us up in hotels. One town over for a week while they decontaminated the groundwater. Hmm. We'd better get going. It's about time! I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rolo. I see my reputation precedes me. Welcome to Mission Control. Rolo waggled his head with pride. <laughs> You'll find we've spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thanks! Hey Luca, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah. While I was waiting I made some... improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. <laughs> he goes all out, doesn't he? Always. get all this junk in the first place. There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades us junk for snacks. Junk food for <laughs> junk food for junk. Nice. So, pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative. I'll give you that. Luca, are we sure we can trust the new recruit? I'll vouch you for her. Thanks, I guess. Okay, Luca, you promised to fill me in on the Valentine Warehouse. Um... Luca sucked in a long breath. So, like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe there were squatters? I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. You were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. And it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go and I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. 
On our way here, Beck and I saw Eris Valentine meeting with Grant. Wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. Rollo let out a low whistle. And they weren't there for idle chit chat. It was a proper clandestine meet meetup. So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. And then you saw your gran in the same suit talking to Eris Valentine. Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Rolo and Luca shot back a look. No offense. And so we can logically conclude aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town. And the leader is your grand, and she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my grand at the warehouse. I wrote that person's mask to get away. The mask grand was wearing wasn't damaged. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your gran is weird. But she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Gran isn't from here? No, she came a few months back to take care of me after... After his mom went missing. Did she you know your Gran before? Not really, no. It's been years since I'd seen her. Luca, don't take this the wrong way. But are we sure your gran is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. I'm just saying. It sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. We can say the same about your family. But you're right. Luca, your grand is hiding something, and Pa always says, folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. If my grand really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Grand's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you to... Tomorrow, when the coast is clear, and we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. <gasps> Chapter 6. We're gonna be snooping. Yeah. Secret lair. Ooh. Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. Where's our soccer ball? I want to kick it around some more. What time is it? Aww, look at shirt. Cute shirt. Oh, look at the pants. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Um, oh. Who's knocking on the door now? No soccer ball. Someday we're gonna go into that. That room. <laughs> <laughs> Rolo, what on earth is that? Hmm? That ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this? It helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more of those. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear. Yep, whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. If I were a Gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. He's got his hand in his pocket. Yeah. Hat on his head. Yeah. 
Rollo flung open the cabinet with confidence. Aha. He coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. It's safe to assume anything dusty isn't what you're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. Eureka! She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Rolo. Drat. May already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to ash. Okay. I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere Grant doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first? No dice, it's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. Hmm. And I have no idea where the key is. If it's really important, <laughs> it really is important. And she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has a berry bush. Er, she has her berry bushes. Who's ever thought? I'm going to take this important thing and huck it in a bush. True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well, she is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But that. That doesn't matter anyway. I can't reach the latch. A look of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, <laughs> then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. <laughs> we get on each other's shoulders. All right, Rolo. <laughs> this is your time to shine. Ah, uh, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed with... Before he could finish, Lucas scrambled up Rollo's back. <laughs> hey! This is my idea of detective work! Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing! Stop complaining and hold still. Three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss, but the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh hey! Let me just yank on this random teacup and... As Beck pulled on one of the teacups, oh. it slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. <laughs> Seems like Gran has been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret layers. Evil masterminds and superheroes. <laughs> so... What do you think? Do we think she is? We're about to find out. Also, they have chairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so more of an unhinged, conspiracy vibe. Oh wow! Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping on to conclusions. What do we have here? Barrels marked caution explosive. And jam jars. That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your gram making? Ooh, nice. She wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs, right? Only one way to find out. Casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. What? Oh no. 
Huckleberries. He smacked his lips. A hint of brown sugar. And ink. What? Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Uh -huh. Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. <laughs> It's, a, it, it's uh, addressed to Mrs. Fratelli. A grand jam gram? <laughs> it says last night I used the disguise Harris provided to scout out the location. The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Man, are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. So more of bombshell than a bomb. Am I right? You're new here, so I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. Watch Grand Luca jostled each puppy. cabinet drawer in mm -hmm. turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. What do you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Well, are you gonna read it? Hey. I... Here, let me help. Rollo swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of a preeminent scholar in dense documents. And cheeseburgers. <laughs> By all means, proceed. He stopped at a page and mimed holding up a monocle. Oh, here we are. Follow-up examination of Terence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Rolla looked up with heightened surprise. See? Creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Wait. Rollo's finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions. Looks like he came back to this report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Rollo scanned through several more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife's passing, Terence's condition follows close behind. Exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. What does it say next? Rolla rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be more. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? This is BS. Luca slammed the drawer shut. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Oh, she sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is your Gran a serial killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town, out of the kindness of her heart. She puts little symbols by some of them. 
Yeah, Mr. Nencreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on there. Both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Ares has a question mark that has been crossed out. Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim. Hmm. We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. <laughs> Are you gonna get a nice charm from this? Oh. If I click it a hundred times? Maybe. Can't be this far. Yeah? Maybe if I go away and then come back. Patience. Maybe it's just one. <laughs> they crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rolo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Mm. Can't fault that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to town. And if we follow Rolo it... carefully traced the path with his finger. It leads right to... He jabbed down at the end point. Town Square. What? That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Um... Rolo, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as these explosives over there. So it's not hiding treasure? Real bummer. Rolo, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? The festival. <laughs> Did you just say gulp? This feels like a gulp kind of situation. <laughs> Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. She's gonna blow up the festival. Not if we stop her. Uh. uh. What was that? Luca looked up from the map. What was it? No, I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs. the lights. Beck flicked off the light, and they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. <laughs> the kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they've been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Oh. Hello? A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Oh. Anyone down there? The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. Yoo-hoo! I'm not here to hurt anyone. I'm just here to help. Just... At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Hmm. Guess it's nothing. Rolo shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Rolo, don't. It was too late. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy uh. figure. Flaming chicken ch cop! Oh, flaming With chicken coop. With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. You could yell that again. Flaming chicken coop! Rolo? 
mysterious creepy man. Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Well, I don't know if it, if I had it in me. There was only one way to find out. Good crap, Rollo, that was awesome. Wait, did you just kill that person? Luca scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground, pressing his fingers to the man's neck. He sighed with relief. You sure clobbered him, good Rollo. He's not that cold. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Mr. Tolliver. Oh my goodness. Chapter 7. Alright. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.